Yishwin Singh is the author of an international best-selling autobiography turned smash hit feature film that screens in New Zealand cinemas this month. It's the story of a glittering dance career that spanned 20 years, propelling a young man from China to the dizzying heights of international fame as a principal ballet dancer in the US in the 1980s. But for Lee, the real story started long before the glory days began, far from a land of plenty. Born during the Mao regime in a small village near the city of Quindong, Lee was the sixth of seven sons born to hard-working parents struggling to survive. We're born into a life with so little um, lack of opportunities. And was just my life was really um, fated to be a poor peasant, starving peasant for the rest of my life. The minute I was born, that was my destiny. So we relied a lot on hope, big dreams. So I dreamed big, and I had an incredible imagination. So even flying a simple kite as a childhood, and we would, I would send these little paper wishes through the wind blows, uh, through the string, uh, far into the meat with a kite, and I hoped it would travel way beyond the kite, into heaven, and into the place of God to, to, for them to grant my wishes. Those imagination, those big dreams, had kept my hope alive, and uh, urged me, encouraged me to just try harder. Maybe a breakthrough, a little chance would come my way. And that, of course, that one chance happened when I was at age 11 to be selected to go to the Beijing Dance Academy. And it was an incredible a chance, and a fated chance, really, because uh, it was, that chance was almost disappeared before a blink of an eye, but it somehow happened. One of a small number chosen from a massive population, plucked from their families to be trained by Madame Mao's elite Beijing Dance Academy, Li's education combined ballet with Chairman Mao's political theory six days a week. In the beginning, the transition was difficult, but the support of his father never wavered. So when, when I was failing for the first two years of my Beijing Dance Academy uh, time, and I came back with a very poor re re report card. And uh, before I left my year, he gave me a pen. And he wanted me to do better. So it was something I never, I could never forget. And he was a man of few words, didn't accuse me, didn't uh, blame me for poor school, but just do better, son. Yeah. After seven years of relentless hard work, Lee was spotted by the visiting Houston Ballet Company at age 18 and catapulted to a life of professional dance in the United States. Lee's childhood wish came true, but it came at a price. His decision to stay in the States instead of returning to China meant his parents would suffer untold hardship under the Maoist regime, and Lee would be unable to return indefinitely. My parents were incredible. Um, as I said, they were uneducated, but they really had incredible values and principles in life. So they had instilled that secret principles and values in me to work hard, to be kind, and to be passionate about what you do, but also to have compassion for others. Decades later, Lee, now a stockbroker based in Melbourne with his wife and family, embarked on the difficult process of writing down his remarkable story. And I always thought it was ra rather self-indulgent to have your own story told in the public way. Um, so my thought was, after my rather public dance career, I would just fade into the, the sunset and spend quiet time with my family, just be an ordinary person f for once, you know, be nice. But constant questioning by curious friends and the encouragement of a writer friend finally convinced him that his story could give hope and courage to others. Six years after its first publication, Mao's Last Dancer has sold 400,000 copies in 30 countries, 
It's been reprinted 47 times and translated into dozens of languages. I just found it so inspiring uh, and, you know, just what, all that he went through and never gave up, like, just carried on. It just makes me want to, I don't know, incorporate that in my own life. So, yeah, very inspiring. Loved it. I found it brilliant. I love the, um, the background, the whole story, the way he came from nothing to everything by sheer hard work. And I think that um, because I know ballet, I know the hard work it is. I was in London for many years myself as a dancer. And um, this man has got something special. Because of that, I will do it very, very true about what happened in China and what happened in America. And then some of, of the stories I heard from, from my parents, actually, but I couldn't really understand some of them. But I know it's very true. Very fascinating book. The film, produced in Australia and their highest grossing film at the box office in 2009, is taking Lee's story to an even wider audience. I think it's, um, it's inspiring to to capture Lee's achievement on the screen. I mean, uh, he was a man of extraordinary determination, charm, but determination. And to actually be able to show people, you know, what you can achieve through sheer willpower is um, exhilarating. Hopefully through my book and the movie, that will encourage others to dream big and to try hard. And when I dance, I dance for them. <laughs>